All right, for this pro tip, we're gonna talk about a four star relatively advanced analytics tip. And we're gonna discuss how to evaluate variable inputs using Excel's data tables. Now, the data tables that we're talking about here are different from your standard cell ranges formatted as tables. In fact, I wish Excel gave them a different name because they actually operate quite differently. What we're talking about are the data tables that you'll find in your data tab from the what if analysis tools. And what these data tables do is they allow you to calculate an array of results with the click of a button based on an entire range or variety of potential input values. So to show you what I mean by that, we're gonna look at our property cost calculator tool, which we've seen before throughout the course. And the idea here is to understand exactly what our mortgage cost or our monthly mortgage cost would look like based on different interest rates ranging all the way down from 3% up to 10% in half percentage increments. So the manual kind of tedious old school approach would be to plug in those different interest rates into cell H8 and see what the mortgage costs spit out in cell H14. But instead of doing that, we're gonna get a little bit more sophisticated and we're gonna select this table, this blank range in columns J and K and we're going to use Excel's data table tool to produce an array of results based on that range of interest rates. So we're going to head to our data tab. We're going to drill into the data table option from the what if analysis tools. And then here we only have two potential inputs, a row input cell and a column input cell. And in this particular demo, all we have is a column containing that range of values and the cell in which we want to test that range of values lives in H8. So by treating H8 as the column input, Excel is able to spit out this entire array of results right there in column K based on the range of interest rates in column J. So rather than manually testing 15 or so different interest rate values and recording the results or typing a formula 15 times, we've configured the data table tool one time and produced all of the results with the click of a button. Now, data tables can be used to evaluate results like we see here based on changes to either a single input variable, like we've shown with interest rate, or with multiple variables, in which case we'd also plug in a row input cell. And I'm gonna show you an example of both as soon as we jump into Excel. But real quick, common use cases, calculating a matrix of results based on combinations of input values, like this, monthly payments based on things like interest rates and down payment amounts. Or taking that even a step further, you could use this tool to identify the optimal outcome given multiple combinations of variable inputs. So let's go ahead, open up our pro tip workbook, roll up our sleeves and practice building some of these data tables. All right, so from your table of contents, go ahead and scroll over to the analytics tips. We're gonna look at the data table demo in this case. Go ahead and link straight out to that purple tab. And here you'll see our property cost calculator, which as we've seen before, takes a bunch of inputs like the purchase price, the tax rate, and some loan terms, and spits out outputs like the loan amount, the mortgage costs, property tax, etc. Now what we care about in this case is the monthly mortgage cost here in cell H14. And this mortgage cost is a function of a few different factors. For one, the down payment, and for two, the interest rate among others. So if we change our down payment from 20% to 30%, you'll notice that our monthly mortgage costs are reduced. By contrast, if we change our interest rate from 4% to 5%, our mortgage costs increase. So these two factors both impact the mortgage cost. So what we're gonna do here is create two different data tables to test or evaluate different combinations of those potential input values. So in our first case here, all we're testing are variations in the interest rate. So step one is to create a column containing each of the variations in the interest rate that we want to test in order to see the impact on our output formula or our mortgage costs. And I've just got to show you this tip here. You can either type in these values manually or what you can do, I'm going to delete those. You can type your first value here, hover over the lower right corner, and listen to this. Hold the right click button, drag down and back up, then release 
to access this kind of hidden menu here. And what we're going to do is drop into series at the bottom. We're going to fill a series in a column and we're going to step or increment by 0.5 percentage. And we're going to stop at 10%. That's our max value. Press OK. Boom, it's filled that perfect incremental series for us with one click of the button. Now, the goal here is to populate these blank cells here from K4 through K18. And in order to do that with data tables, we have to set things up in a very specific way. Step one, which we just achieved, is laying out the range of input values. Step two is actually linking to the formula that we're looking to evaluate. So we're just taking the formula from H14 and we're referencing it right here in cell K3. And what that's gonna allow us to do is select this entire range of cells, which includes both the formula itself and the variety of input values. And from here, we can go into our data tab, what if analysis, data table. And again, just like our demo, we don't have any input variables in a row, but we do have variable inputs in a column. And the input cell itself is not this range that I just created. It's the cell that's actually referenced in the formula that contains the interest rate, which in this case is cell H8. And that's all we need to configure this data table. Press OK. And there we go. It's populated all of the monthly cost outputs based on this different range of interest rates. And as you can see, it's generated a single array or table array rather than 15 individual formulas here. So moving on to our next demo, we're going to follow that same approach, except we're adding one additional set of criteria here for different down payments. So what we'll do here is create an actual matrix of values that account for not only changes to interest rate, but also changes to down payment, either 5, 10, or 20%. So very similar process here. I'm going to select the entire range of cells, including the formula and the variable row and column input cells. We're going to go into data, what if analysis, data table. And now we do have a row input cell. And that's the cell in the formula containing our row input variations, which are the down payments. So our down payments live in cell H7. There we go. And again, our column is the cell containing the interest rate, which is our column index. And press OK. And there you have it. We've produced a single two-dimensional array this time that produces output values based on multiple criteria. So there you go. These data tables in Excel can be a little bit tricky, a little awkward to work with at first, but once you really get a handle on them, they can be a great tool for evaluating an entire array of results based on variable inputs.